Here we will use acid-base reactions as a simple introduction to using curved arrows to describe electron movement in organic mechanism. While we need to think of chemical reactions as interactions between atoms and molecules that are moving, dynamic processes like this are difficult to recreate on paper. In this seemingly simple animation, the blue electron-rich species with a lone pair is attacking an electron-poor red atom with the green group breaking off to avoid breaking the octet rule. While this is a very simple reaction, in the greater scheme of things, it is impossible to make even this brief animation in a short amount of time. We need an alternative method, which is where the curved mechanism arrows come in. Let's consider as a starting point the interaction between an electron-rich base, represented as B, with an acidic compound, labeled HA. We need a method to describe their dynamic interaction that is easy to understand and that works quickly on paper. Here the base and the acid are the starting materials that begin as stable compounds before they are mixed together. The base then donates its lone pair into the anti-bond of the HA bond, temporarily destabilizing the system as the materials transition towards products. The transition state is a theoretical picture of what the system looks like at the highest energy point. Completion of the BH bond formation and the HA bond breaking results in products. The original lone pair is now a bond pair and the original bond pair has become a lone pair. For reasons to be developed, the products are often more stable than the original starting materials. That is a very large amount of information that has to be transferred onto paper without creating an animation. In any acid-base reaction, we need to describe how an electron-rich base interacts with an electron-poor acid to produce the corresponding conjugate acid and conjugate base. We need to remember that orbital overlap is involved and that the non-bonding lone pair orbital from the base needs to overlap with the anti-bond of the HA bond to get the reaction going. So Robert Robinson came up with the curved arrow to describe these interactions. This is now the universal method for describing dynamic changes in organic reactions. These arrows are now a convention, like driving on the correct side of the road. The arrows must flow from areas of high to low electron density and not the other way around. Arrows are used to describe individual bond making and bond breaking events and chemical reactions. In polar mechanisms, one arrow will describe one bond being formed or broken. We use electronegativity values and lone pairs to identify electron rich areas. Arrows will flow in the same direction as electron density is transferred. The arrows show up in over 100 mechanisms, so getting comfortable with their use early is important. To consider some examples of how to apply the curved arrows, we begin with a carboxylic acid reacting with sodium hydroxide. The products of this reaction are the sodium salt of the carboxylate anion and water. Firstly, we need to identify dipoles and charges to work out which reactant is electron rich and which is electron poor. Here the hydroxide anion is rich and the proton on the carboxylic acid is poor. Then we add the curved arrows to show the electron-rich base donating to the electron-poor proton and the conjugate base breaking off to complete the conversion. In the next example we have the lithium salt of an amine reacting with an alcohol. This results in a proton transfer to give the amine and the alkoxide salt. For the starting materials, the anionic nitrogen is identified as the electron-rich center and the proton on O is the electron-poor area. The bond-making curved arrow then begins at the electron-rich N and is pushed to the electron-poor H. The second, bond-breaking arrow, describes the electronegative O taking a pair of electrons to avoid breaking the octet rule and completing the process. In this third example, a terminal alkyne is treated with sodium amide. The result is the sodium salt of the alkyne, along with ammonia. The electron-rich center is readily identified as the anionic nitrogen atom, while the alkyne proton is known to be weakly acidic. The bond-forming arrow, therefore, begins at nitrogen and goes towards the alkyne proton. The bond-breaking arrow shows the sp hybrid carbon picking up the electrons from the CH bond that breaks. Try to use the same process on each of these situations to work out what the products will be and how the curved arrows are applied to describe the reactions.